Okay, uh, next I would like to demonstrate a, a kind of an elaboration on the discovering the landmarks for the infraorbital injection. Uh, a good way to start is to have your patient, uh, normally we're going to have Connie with her head kind of straight down. Uh, in a normal situation we would have the patient with their head tilted back so as to not interfere with the chest that we're giving the injection. Uh, start off by having your patient have their eyes open looking straight ahead. The reason for this is that more often than not, if you draw an imaginary line from the pupil of her eye straight down and intersect that with the inferior border of the orbit here, that line will lie right on line with the actual foramen, as, as Heather is demonstrating on the skull there. Oftentimes, if you palpate that area, you can actually feel the depression there. So this is our target area. Okay very very important to use the normal anatomy to help you find that once you have found that now we'll have head, we'll have Connie tilt her head back oftentimes very helpful to actually put your finger there once you've located that open tip your head back a little bit for me now with your index finger retract the tissue keeping your thumb there Borrow that from me, Heather. Now I'll use two by two as kind of a simulate the serum. Now you've located the foramen. Your thumb is kind of the target. You're using your finger to kind of retract the tissue. Come in at your insertion site and aim for your thumb. A little awkward here, but we can demonstrate that clinically to make that easier for you. Oftentimes, with a little experience, you can actually visualize where that is and fully concentrate on retracting the cheek and lip and then proceed to that intersection right here where we find the foramen. Go up until you contact bone, and there you are. This is the infraorbital nerve block. The nerves are the anterior and middle superior alveolar the inferior papural, the lateral nasal, and the superior labial. The areas in SSIs are the pulps of the maxi maxillary central incisor through the canine on the injected side, the pulps of the maxillary premolars, and the mesial buccal root of the first molar in about 72% of the cases, the buccal per periodontium and the bone of these same teeth, the lower eyelid, the lateral aspect of the nose, and the upper lip. The needle gauge in length is 25 or 27 long or short for smaller patients. The patient position is supine or semi-supine with the neck extended slightly, chest not to interfere. Operator position is 10 o'clock facing the patient or facing the same direction as the patient. The landmarks are the mucobuckle fold, the infraorbital notch, the ridge, the depression, and the foramen. The target is the infraorbital foramen below the infraorbital notch. The syringe position is to orient the syringe towards the infraorbital foramen. The needle should be held parallel to the long axis of the tooth at the height of the mucobuckle fold directly over the first premolar. The bevel orientation faces towards the bone. Pressure anesthesia is to maintain a firm pressure with your finger over the injection site both during and at least for one minute after the injection to increase the diffusion of anesthetic solution into the infraorbital foramen. The depth of insertion is 16 millimeters or about half the length of the long needle. Gently contact us. Contact. Aspiration potential is 0.7%. Negative aspiration. Amount of solution is very slowly, 0 0.9 to 1.2 millimeters or about half to two-thirds of the cartridge.